All right. Good morning. I'm going to be working on a logo for a friend of mine. Let's see. Mr. Sean Burton. This is for you, buddy. I want to make sure the integrity of the logo is maintained, but I have to recreate it here in high res so they can print stuff with it and do what they need with it. So to do this, I just made a grid in Photoshop. Let's see. Yeah. And uh, laid it over their original logo. And then I just made my own grid on paper, as you guys can see. And I can do this a lot faster, this traditional way, than on the computer because I don't have a Cintiq and I'm just used to working this way. This whole process this morning so far has been about 30 minutes or so, 40 minutes. And now I'm just freely laying into my blue drawing that I made because I'm very confident that it's going to look really similar to the original. Enough so that I'm not afraid of what the customer in this case is going to think, even though I know he's really grateful I'm doing this. I want to make sure that it is exactly, as much as possible, the same image the viewers have been used to seeing by now. I basically want it, look, it to look like Sean did this artwork himself to anyone who just looks at the screen real quick for the first time. It doesn't look, I don't want it to look like it's been redone by another person. And that's what I mean by maintaining the integrity. I don't want this to look like a new logo. I want it to look like the same exact logo, just cleaner and a little more up to date, maybe, if you, as you could say. Forgive me, it's early in the morning and I'm a little groggy, but I want to get this done in a timely manner. So if you ever find yourself doing a logo like this and you're trying to recreate someone's idea, the most important thing, I think, is the overall shape and the proportions. You can get away with a lot of little details being slightly different, but the outside shape needs to really look close to your original. I'm not going to follow every detail to the letter, but man, am I trying my best to get that outer shape very very close even the shape of the teeth here the way the little brain stem comes down the exact position that the original was in and then what I can do is just make it a little more lumpy a little more brainy you know serve the client by improving their idea not not changing it if that makes any sense I even want these little crumbs in precisely the same, approximately the same place as well. But it's all very important to the viewer for, now let's see here. When I'm, when I'm doing these strokes, I'm not really worried about my hand being really steady like I normally am when I'm inking stuff. Because of the nature of the subject, I can be a little bit, you know, jittery, like I am this morning. I can just do this quickly and confidently because a brain is very lumpy and wiggly. So the biggest thing I want to worry about now is just following through with each stroke. You know, ma making sure I see where my stroke is going to start and where it's going to end. I don't want to be so random that I'm just quickly flying through it without a nice 
be, you know, starting point and destination. Whenever you're inking, you always have a starting point and a destination. Because if not, you can easily get tunnel vision and just start inking. Now, I think that looks pretty lumpy, pretty brainy. And those are all the original lines. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just walk th through section by section. I'm going to look at every little lump of this form of a brain that, I'm, that I've painted here. And I'm going to try to just fix it up here and there without complicating it too much. Like right there, I'll close those. I think that looks good. I want to add a couple of little darker spots where it looks like there's, like here, I'll fill that in, where it looks like there's a little depth, a little uh, shadow in there. Right there's a little thin spot. I'll shadow that up. We'll make this whole thing. Now this is where I'm going in and just kind of improving it. Not changing it, just making it a little better. See that? I don't know if, you can, if my tiny little changes there are translating well on camera or not, but I'm just looking for forms that are overhanging right now, and then I'm going to just add a little thickness to the bottom of that line, a little bit of weight, and that is going to really pull it forward. Let's see, and I don't want to do too much. I just want to, no need for too much. Biggest thing here is don't smear any ink anywhere. Don't want to have to do any white out cleaning up. And then I see a little line here that's dull at the end. I want to make that a sharp point. Like all the other lines, they're pointy at the end because that's just the way this thing is going to be. There we go. And I'm not going to do any shading either other than these little darker areas, like I say, to make it, give it some depth. No reason to spend too much time on this stage, because it's the overall project, not one step that's important. So that's it. There you go. That's your black plate, Sean. Right there. And that's how quick we knock these things out. Have a great day, everybody.